Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out in the rain to play with a rifle that I first saw at Iwa in Germany. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, which you should if you don't, we posted some pictures of this rifle. And I kind of joked and said that I had to go all the way to Germany to see this rifle. Well, by the time I got home, the guys over at Brown Else had sent me this TNE rifle. I did not pay for this gun. They sent it to me for testing and evaluation. And just so you guys know, I know Pete Brownell and I'm friends with many of the folks over at Brown Else, just so you guys have full, full disclosure. So this rifle was waiting for me when I got home. And I was really, really excited because I was excited to see it at Iwa in Germany. And then when Jason texted me and said one had actually shown up at the shop, I just could not wait to get home. I kept thinking about playing with this rifle. And this kind of goes back to what I've been saying for quite some time now. I'm tired of all the latest and tactical cool stuff and all the Gucci mods that people do to AR-15s. I'm just bored with modern high-tech AR-15s. I have rifles that are set up with a simple red dot sight and a flashlight and a sling. And you know, that's basically all I ever run on a gun. I don't need all the crazy stuff that come out like potato grips and stuff like that. Not interested. I'm more interested in playing with prototypes like this. This is the BRN 601 Proto, which is a replica of a rifle that um, Eugene Stoner, James Sullivan, and James Fremont would have been working on around 1958. It replicates one of about 40 guns that would have been built. And that is what really excites me. Retro, I've been telling companies to go retro for some time. I'm really glad to see Brownells and other companies doing that. Brownells even went so far as to replicate the 25 round magazine the prototypes would have had. Now keep in mind the early prototypes probably would have been chambered in 222 Remington, but this is a 5.56 rifle. I have 25 rounds of Federal M193 ball. Uh, our friends over at Federal do, do send us this ammunition for free. I'd like to thank them for sending it. If you'd like to purchase some, uh, we do have friends over at LAX Ammunition. We have a discount code down below. We don't get any money for the use of that code. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and charge the rifle by pulling the trigger and the, char the carrying handle back and releasing it. And now I'm going to fire 25 rounds out of this prototype magazine, out of my prototype AR-15. Wow, that is awesome. I love this, guys. I just love being able to shoot a piece of history even if it isn't an actual prototype. Again, about only 40 of these actually exist. And this is a close enough copy for me to have a lot of fun with this rifle, with its iron sights. I don't even have a hole drilled up here for an optic, which is okay by me. Let's load up some more magazines and see how it functions, not just with its prototype magazine, but with standard AR-15 magazines and stuff like that. Let's just put several hundred rounds through it today in the rain if we can and see how she works. All right, let's load up some more mags. I've already sighted the rifle in and I was able to use just a standard AR-15 five pin sight adjustment tool to accomplish the zeroing of the rifle. We have a, a target down at 50 yards. We won't have access to a hundred yard range until spring hits. So we're just stuck with shooting 50 yard groups right now. I'm gonna go ahead and fire two five shot groups using just some American Eagle M193 ball. This is not match ammunition. And I no longer have match grade eyes. My eyes are aging quickly. But let's go ahead and see what we get at 50 yards. Insert the 25 round magazine, charge the rifle, and let's go ahead and shoot those two five shot groups and see what we get.
All right, run down in the rain. Let's see what we got out of this rifle. Let's take a look at those two groups I shot at 50 yards using standard M193 ball ammo. Here's the actual target that we shot, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you the ballistics data. So the first group I shot was on the bottom and that was probably the loose nut behind the butt plate performing there once again for you guys. And that one averaged 2.99 MOA, three MOA, which is military grade accuracy out of a rack grade M4 using military ball. But then we go up to the second target that I shot. It looks like I settled down a little bit using the exact same M193 ball and that group measured 1.72 MOA, or it was just about 0.9 of an inch, just under an inch at 50 yards. Again, 1.72 MOA, which is pretty darn good for any rack grade AR-15, especially one with a one in 12 barrel shooting standard military ball ammo. So I'm guessing if you have good eyes, a good trigger finger, good trigger, trigger control. If you're using match ammunition, it'll be probably a one and a half inch gun, maybe even a little bit better, which is pretty much what you might expect out of a standard 20 inch barreled AR-15 using iron sights. So overall, yeah, I'm happy with the performance of the rifle. It's shooting really nicely. Now I will mention that I had to bury that front sight pretty far down to get the elevation right which I've noticed on some of my other replicas from uh, Brownells. And then my rear sight, I had to move to the right to get windage right. It's not pegged to the right completely, but it's noticeably moved over to the right. Again, it seems like pretty much all my Brownells rifles, I wind up having to move that rear sight over. It could just be me. We all use sights differently, but um, nothing's wonky looking with the sights whatsoever. It still offers a nice sight picture. So overall, I'm happy with the performance of the rifle. Of course, in 1958, when this rifle would have been developed, there's no way they would have known that we would have hip fired in the 1980s. So we're going ahead and test the rifle for 80s hip fire, just to see how she works. And we're going to see if it bump fires as well. Oh no, I did it again. <laughs> yep, I fired too fast. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you can fire just a little too fast when you bump fire. But it seems like it hit 80s hip fires just fine. Ah, I keep wanting to reach for a T-handle. These Lancers, when they're full 30, they're just a little bit too tight. Yep, it passes the 80 hip fires test and it also passes the ice hole test. Let's talk about some of the features of the BRN601 Proto and then take it apart and look at it on the inside very quickly. We'll start at the rear of the rifle. Now, first of all, you're gonna notice it has the brown furniture. This replicates the brownish look of the furniture that would have originally been present on some of the early prototype rifles. I think there's roughly about 40 of the original prototypes built. And the only difference being this is color injection molded as brown and the original furniture probably would have been painted and would have had that speckly brownish color to it much like the AR-10s of the era. But it certainly has the look. Start off with the butt plate You'll see there's no trap door for a cleaning kit. It's just rounded. This all looks pretty darn close to what a prototype probably would have looked like. Then we have the pinned rear sling swivel, reminiscent of the 601 Air Force rifle that we talked about in an earlier video. And then moving forward, we have just a standard A1 type brown pistol grip here. 
we have this rear pin, which would be probably correct. And notice that there's no T charging handle. That's because this is the prototype. It has the trigger inside the carrying handle, just like the AR-10 before it. Now you'll notice <clears throat> on the right-hand side, we have a safety selector that no longer has a tick mark in it. That was a complaint of some of the earlier guns that Brownells had, which I pointed out. And so they've machined this down to get rid of that tick mark, which looks more accurate. And then moving forward, we have no fencing, of course, magazine release, slab side, no forward assist up here. We do have my helicopter tape that I like to put on there to protect my guns that I don't want to ding up because the brass will come back and the neck will hit over here. It has a correct A1 style port cover, chrome bolt carrier, the trigger inside the charging handle, and back here we have standard A1 sights. And inside we have the two apertures like you would find on a standard A1. Now it's also worth pointing out that these early prototypes wouldn't be current mil spec. So this rifle is built to current mil specs, so you'll be able to use standard AR-15 magazines and trigger groups and bolts and carriers and accessories like that should you need to or want to. The original prototypes, like the 25 round magazines that this rifle comes with, which this is a pretty darn close replica of the original 25 round magazines, with the exception of it being black, and I believe the prototypes are actually a light gray. Um, the original magazines, the prototypes used, wouldn't work in a standard AR-15 that's currently mil-spec. So that's one of the nice things that Brownells changed about the prototypes. And of course, it would cost them even more money to truly replicate one of the early prototypes, which would have driven the cost way up probably, where most people wouldn't want to buy it. At $12.99 right now on their website, it's not a bad deal considering you know, the Troys are about 1100 or 1150 something like this, and this is now uh, priced at $1,299, and it's about as close as you're going to get to an early prototype AR-15, but I digress. Moving forward, we have the standard slip ring. We have early prototype-ish looking hand guards. I'm guessing this stuff was sourced from the guys over at Nodak Spud. Earlier receivers that I have from Brownells, which I'll show you here in a second, does have NDS here in the carrying handle for Nodak Spud. This one does not but I'm guessing that's the source still, but they've gotten this gray finish, you know, pretty much perfected this, this anodization slash parkerization. They've gotten that gray look down pat. And I'll show you one of their earlier rifles. It was black anodized. That's a replica that uh, I'm glad basically that they went to this gray. Cause that is again, one of the original things that I dinged the replicas for was the incorrect color of the receivers. All right, so now we have this hand guards, which doesn't matter which one's on top or bottom, they're both cut for the gas tube right back here. And these again look like AR-10 hand guards and would probably be similar to what you might find on an early prototype AR-15 before the production started. And these rifles would have been built probably right around 1958 or so. And again, about 40 of them would have been built. Some of the early, early rifles, like the number one rifle, which is pictured in Larry Vickers book about the AR-15, which is out there now, and I highly recommend you pick it up. Uh, they have a picture of the first rifle built by Armalite, and it had no muzzle device on it. You know, it, it looked considerably different from this rifle because it was number one, had a non-adjustable rear sight on it. Uh, the front sight has been removed. It just has, looks like a dovetail or some sort of a post in the front, and then has a leather thing on the, on the like a, a recoil pad, which wouldn't be required for probably what was a 222 Remington uh, chambering. But anyway, so later guns probably would have looked more like this. Keep in mind that James Sullivan, James Fremont, and Eugene Stoner were working on the project to take what they had learned from the Dutch contract AR-10s, basically just trying to compress it down and miniaturize it to make it into the early prototype AR-15s. All right, so that's why you would, you'll see that this looks very similar to what Brownells did with the early uh, AR-10s that they tried to replicate that I have a video on already out there. So these handguards look very similar. Now it is worth noting, let's go ahead and see if I can pull this slip ring down. It is worth noting that the handguards do have heat shielding in them. And you can see the profile on the barrel. The barrel does have 
a chrome lined barrel. It's a one in 12 twist versus the one in 14 that probably would have been found on the early prototypes in the early M16s. Later to change to one in, um, you know, one in 14 to one in 12, which this is, then to one in seven, which is the current military standard. Again, these hand guards are not directional. Let's see if I can get this sucker to go back on. These straight slip rings can be kind of hard to get a hold of. So we do have the, the heat shielding inside there and stuff like that. Moving forward to the front sight block, looks pretty close. I, I've seen pictures where there's more openness here on the front sight block, but I mean, it's definitely not a current F sight block like you would see on a modern M4 or something like that, or an A2 uh, M16 or even an A1. So it does have that prototype look to it. I've seen different profiles of barrels and different you know, front sight blocks. But what is nice, you have a standard A1 front sight, so you can use a standard sight adjustment tool for elevation. And then in the rear, of course, we have a standard A1 rear sight, which you can again use a standard tool to adjust that rear sight. Moving forward, we have, you know, the gray parked looking barrel crush washer, and then we have the three pronged duck bill flash hider, which you would see on later rifles. Some of the early rifles weren't threaded, they were just simply crowned, and there was no muzzle device. But, you know, the early guns, like the 601 Air Force model, would have had this duck bill on it. Had the sling swivels here, and of course in the rear. And then let's take a look at the other side of the rifle here really quick. Slab side, standard selector. We just have safe and semi. Doesn't rotate around to auto. A standard modern ping pong paddle. You can see the dimpled front takedown pin. The brown L's markings on the receiver. And pretty much, you know, standard AR-15 on the side. Of course, this one does not have a Ford Assist on it, which would be incorrect. Now here's an earlier um, XM177 rifle that Brownells put out, and we can see the color difference where they originally had done black, which this XM177 on the top has. Now they're doing more of a gray. So you can see that they're getting the color right. They're, they're listening to what people said. You'll notice this has the tick mark on it and I didn't think that was correct, and it wasn't. And they machined that down on the prototype, and now you can also get the XM177s. They'll now be gray. They won't have this tick mark on them. So, and this one has the A2, this has the A1 dust cover. So they've listened to what people were saying. So let's quickly take it apart. Push pin in the rear, pull the charging handle. You have a standard bolt and carrier. I'm not gonna take that apart. And then you have to kind of take this charging handle out by pivoting it down, have a standard AR-15 trigger mechanism in here so you can replace it with whatever you want. Uh, the early prototypes probably wouldn't have that. I'm not going to take the bolt and carrier apart, but you can see that it's MP tested and it's properly staked on the gas key and it's chrome lined. All right, put it back together, kind of tilt and rock that charging handle into place. Drop it all back together close it up and push it. The front detent, uh, there is nothing holding it in place, so it's not captive like the rear pin. It just pushes out and comes all the way through, but it's machined flat and would be correct for the early rifles. So there you have it. Kind of a breakdown of the BRN601 Proto. So let's ring this old girl that's actually a new girl that looks like an old girl out here really quick for you guys. We're gonna put some more of the Federal M193 ball through it. I have some OK Industries standard 30 round GI mags. Go ahead and charge the rifle there. I have a few of these. I have a few Lancers. I think I have five magazines total on me. And let's see how warm we can get this pencil weight barreled little rifle. The gun is nice and light. I mean, as you would expect with a pencil weight barrel and minimalistic polymer grips and all that good stuff, this is true to form for what the AR-15 was originally intended to be, a nice lightweight fighting rifle. This time we have a Lancer magazine. I use these quite a bit. See how she works.
All the magazines seem to be working just fine, drop free. Got another Lancer here. Uh-oh. That's probably the Lancer mag. Ugh. Sometimes they can be a little bit tight on closing on a full 30 round mag. I'm just shooting at junk downrange at this point. Got a bowling pin over there. Let's see what we can do to it. Doing pretty darn good. At this point, we've pretty much cooked all the oil off the barrel. Have another OK Industries magazine here. Got some more junk downrange to beat up on. Last magazine, got a bowling pin I've identified down there. And again, this is an OK Industries. This is one of their Sure Feeds. Only had one problem with these. Had a flat dark earth one that had uh, failures to feed. I think it was a little bit out of spec. The rest of them so far, we haven't had any problems with them out of the different guns we're using them in. Kind of testing them out here. All right, the gun is getting hot. The heat coming out of these vent holes is getting too much for me. Back here, it's still easy to hold on to the gun, but up here, man, the heat coming out of those holes is pretty, pretty uh, intense. All right, I'd say we got her nice and hot. We got that gas tube to change color on us there. Barrel. Pretty much lost all of its oil and uh, the hand guards with the teeth shielding are holding up just fine the heat like i said coming out of those vent holes whoo that is hot but not uh, not too bad pretty comfortable here don't want to hold it there works just fine just like any other ar-15 i've ever shot as long as you got a quality manufacturer you're going to find the guns to be extremely reliable and accurate good rifles all the way around and brown l's is upholding that tradition I like this thing. We've been out here pretty much all afternoon. We've shot over 500 rounds to the rifle today of the Federal M193 ball. And we've had no malfunctions with the rifle of any kind, which is not too surprising. I mean, that's kind of the performance you come to expect from a modern AR-15. And even though this thing looks like an old AR-15, it still performs just like a modern AR-15 that you'd pick up from most any manufacturer. So at $12.99, do I think it's worth the money? Well, yeah, but then of course I didn't spend $12.99 on it. This is a T&E rifle, but it's worth $12.99 to me because I am a huge fan of the retro rifles. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. You can follow a link down below. We take no money from the industry or what we are 100% viewer supported. Also, if you'd like to be notified about our new videos, a lot of you guys don't get notifications. That's because YouTube is screwed up. But there is a notification bell. If you go and click that little notification bell, then you should get notified when we post new videos. Also, if you'd like to support us, a great way to do that is to pick up a t-shirt from our Forge from Freedom t-shirt store. We have a brand new CNN commie shirt that's kind of funny. Check it out, link down below. And also, if you would like to support us, swing by and check us out at coppercustom.com. That, and we are Twitch gamers. There's a link down below to our Twitch channel. Please give it a follow, go over there. And if you like, watch, like to watch Twitch gaming, um, you know, follow us over on Twitch. And if you're a Patreon supporter, send us a note 
and we'll add you as a friend on the PSN network and you can play with this as we uh, live stream some of our games. All right, we're gonna go ahead and finish off this last 30 round magazine and head home. Thanks for 11 years of support, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Woohoo! Loving it!